Okay, everyone. Well, uh, welcome to the second ever Presco webinar. This one is uh, entitled The Social Scene for Digital Printers, Adding Social Media to Your Marketing Toolkit. Uh, and it is sponsored by OSA's Presco Business Development Program. Uh, um, my name is Paul England, and I am the uh, Manager of Client Development for OSA North America. And uh, with me is Bob Boucher from Cole Creative. And uh, we're going to cover a variety of topics on social media today. And uh, we're, we're glad that you're here. So, Bob, take it away. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, I am with Cole Creative, which is a marketing and creative services uh, agency here in Boston. And you know, it wasn't so long ago that social media was seen as sort of a fun way to keep in touch with friends and family. But as you probably know, it has very quickly become sort of a mainstream set of tools for, for marketing, for businesses. It's almost come to the point where a company is almost conspicuous by its absence of a social media program. So what is social media? Well, it's the proverbial, if you ask 20 people, you probably get 20 different definitions. But in, in my humble opinion, social media is a set of tools that really gives you new ways to find new customers, to develop relationships with them, to build their trust, hopefully to get their business. It's really what sales and marketing has always been all about, finding prospects, converting them to customers. In fact, it's also a great way, social media that is, is a great way to stay in touch with existing customers. Now, there are quite a few myths and urban legends out there about social media. For example, some people say, well, it's free, or others say, you can do it in your spare time. Some people think it's the holy grail for answering all their business challenges. Others say, well, it's going to replace all traditional marketing tools such as direct mail and print collateral, and I can't stress enough that these are all myths and they're not true. In fact, I would maintain that for folks like you, digital print service providers or people looking to get into digital, social media can be a real boon to your business, not just in promoting your business, but in providing new services to your clients, such as personalized direct mail pieces and personalized collateral and other digitally printed materials. Your clients are adopting social media tools to help them develop close relationships with their clients. And I can think of no better way to fulfill those new connections than with personalized digital communication solutions such as what you can provide. So let's move to our agenda. Let's get going here. Okay, today's agenda is as follows. Uh, the social media universe at a glance. It's a huge universe and, and there's much to see there. But we're going to take a quick flyby look at it. Secondly, we're going to look at how digital printers, your peers in the industry, are using social media to some significant effect. Before we end, uh, we hope to give you some quick tips to get started right away. Uh, you can attract more visitors to your website, join a social network such as LinkedIn to develop some new relationships, and you can even upload a video to YouTube. We're going to go through all of that this afternoon in the next hour. So as we said, we're going to start by navigating the social media universe, and it really is huge. I mean, there are hundreds if not thousands of social media platforms and tools, and you know, if you look at all these, you can get overwhelmed and intimidated by all of them just trying to keep up with it. But you know, we can kind of categorize the social media universe into these various constellations, such as search engine marketing populated by such well-known names as Google and Bing and Yahoo, or social networking tools such as Facebook, which has been in the news quite a bit, or LinkedIn, which is more of a business a social networking tool. And moving on, other constellations for publishing, publishing material to say Wikipedia, or sharing videos and images on platforms such as YouTube and Flickr. You can engage in live discussion. This is another social media um, uh, attribute or function. Live discussion such as with Skype on online video tele uh, voice over IP, or chat. Blogging tools, Twitter is, is the name that most people are pretty microblogging tool, and WordPress, another tool for blogging if you're in that case. MMO over here. A ma MMO stands for massive multi-layer or multiplayer, sorry, online communities uh, or virtual communities such as Second Life and live casting such as with Justin TV and Ustream. So these are just some easier ways to kind of get your hands around all the different universes, all the different constellations in this universe. So how are marketers and businesses using social media? Well, in a research in a study done by Marketing Sherpa, either as a strategic activity or a trial activity, you can see the numbers here. Many are using it to increase traffic to their website. Others are using it to increase lead generation 
or increase sales, moving uh, right here, improving their search engine rank, which we'll talk about, or enhancing their brand, helping to lower customer acquisition costs, doing public relations activities, or improving customer support or reducing customer support costs. You can see a large amount of money, however, is being spent, or a large amount of attention is being spent over here on driving traffic to the website. And we're going to find out why and that is and why it's important. So if we look at where the money is being spent in marketing, again, another marketing Sherpa survey. If we're looking where the marketing budget is being spent and where the increases are happening in this year, you see a large majority of it is in website development enhancement, and optimization, social media and networking tools, email, online display ads. Much more money is being developed, or the increases are being applied in the social media realm. One observer, Augie Ray, a senior analyst at Forrester, has said that there is a new marketer in town. The new marketer has a few rules. For example, the new marketer cannot simply focus on outbound messaging. The new marketer cannot merely develop creative messages but create a positive experience for the customer. The new marketer cannot plan scheduled bursts of communication but engage in constant dialogue. The new marketer simply can't count web visits or page hits but try to start measuring changes in customer and consumer behavior. You can't only build campaigns now, but you're building relationships, and that's what these tools are designed to Mr. Ray has said, gone are the days when marketers could carefully craft a message and broadcast that message through just a few select channels to huge portions of the, their audiences. Those, those tactics are out the door. The new marketer has a new set of tools as well. There was a time when marketers had a certain set of tools for reaching out to customers. And they had a certain set of tools for responding to those customers and a certain set of tools for following up. And you can see these are all traditional media, TV, radio, print, direct mail, outdoor advertising, trade events, public relations, te telemarketing. Customers who are interested could call into a, a call center or send in a business reply card or a coupon or go to the retail location. And marketers would then follow up with a phone call or with some fulfillment. But nowadays it's different. The number of tools in all these categories has increased with the advent of social media. We have more media at our disposal. There's more response media, more outreach tools for us to reach our customers, email, social networking, online ads, and mobile marketing, and we'll talk about these further on. Customers can respond in a host of new ways, such as through websites, through email, through social networks, click-throughs on online ads, and through their uh, smartphones, through their mobile devices. Marketing people, folks that can follow up with folks in a vast num new number of ways, such as through personalized websites, personalized collateral, personalized email, personalized direct mail, online communities and forums, and mobile response tools. So the number of arrows in your quiver has really grown exponentially. Some people have described the evolution in terms of marketing in terms like this, whereas before marketers were previously trained to aim, fire, and hit their targets. Nowadays, though, it's a little bit more of a back and forth. You engage, you respond, you repeat, and you develop relationships. It's really all about the conversation. And the conversation, here's the major point, really, that sales and marketing has always been about people buying from people. And those are people that they know and that they trust. If a brand does its job the right way, people feel comfortable doing business with them. If a salesperson develops a good relationship with a customer, that customer is more open to doing business. What social media does is open the door to these re conversations, and thus opens the door to new relationships, trust-building opportunities, and sales. I once heard a, a gentleman say, you know, you can't have a virtual beer with someone, which is the ultimate in customer relations, sitting down and having a beer. But you can't have a virtual beer, but these are tools that allow you to, to get to know those people, develop some relationships, and then eventually get in front of them face to face. Okay, let's get started with some of these tools. Let's start with search engine marketing. The real purpose of search engine marketing is to enable uh, your customers or prospects to find you online, specifically on your website. And you're familiar with these tools such as uh, Google, these search engine uh, vehicles such as Google and Bing and Yahoo. The process of making your website easy to find is known as search engine optimization, or SEO, which you may have heard of, which is 
the process of increasing the volume or quality of traffic to a web page from search engines via natural or organic search results. We're all familiar with this process, right? You went to a word or phrase into the search engine window, you hit enter, and you reach a site. In that case, I entered the words digital printing. And you get a page that looks like this. So what is happening on this page? Let's take a look at that. Well, there's two types of information that are appearing on these search engine pages. You get paid search results, which are these sponsored links, They're usually at the top and along the side. Those are paid ads by marketers. Along the left here, you have organic or unpaid search results. These are entries. Uh, so, but how did these entries get here? Let's take a look. You'll see the first entry at the very top of this search engine results page is this uh, organic listing for the digital printing company. Now, if you take a look here, you see there were 26 uh, million results for the words digital printing. How did this company manage to get to the very top of those 26 million results? The short answer is keywords. It's one of the main uh, one of the main tools for driving folks to your website. Search engines are constantly scouring the internet and your website, looking for the keywords on your website. What are they? Well, they're words and phrases that people use to search for you online. So it behooves you to take a look and say, "Hmm, I wonder what people, what my customers or prospects will use to try to find services that I provide." There's a factory that over 80% of all online searches begin with keyword search. So again, it behooves you to think about those keywords for yourself and your website. Let's go back to the – when we clicked on this, when this uh, organic search results for the digital printing company came up, let's find out how did they get to this site. Let's click on digital printing company. Let's click on this and see what, what comes up. When we look at their home page, I have circled uh, – I have – I've circled just a few of the references to digital printing on this page, and this is just half of the home page. This is what search engines found when they came to this particular company's home page. In fact, if you scroll down their entire home page, which runs fairly long, you will find 47 digital printing keyword references throughout their website, throughout their home page alone. And if you look at the home page, at the HTML coding behind the website, which is really very easy to do. You'll see a list of the company's keywords up here in the title tag and the meta keywords and the keyword descriptions and all throughout their codes. You can easily do this on your own to see what the keyword density is for that page. And if you look even closer up here at the metadata, the title is that, uh, that label at the very top of your website in the little gray bar typically. And you can see that digital, this digital printing company used its main keyword, digital printing, in its title. In their metadata for keywords, they added digital printing. In the description of this page, they included digital printing. In fact, for this title tag here, you have up to 60 characters to use. So it's a great way to enter keywords that search engines will find. For these meta name keywords, you have 10 to 12 words. You have that much space. And you can see that digital printing company here added others, commercial, short run, inkjet, rush, short run. You can see the keywords that they selected for their, for their metadata. In the description in this uh, area here, you have 120 characters. So again, lots of opportunity for entering the keywords that you want your customers to use to find you. So let's see what your, how your peers in the world of digital printing are using uh, keyword technology. These are several print service providers, uh, just a, a handful that I have found that are really doing a good job with using keywords and driving people to their website. We have Vision Marketing Services. We have RT Associates here in Chicago. We have the Ace Group in New York, Reynolds DeWalt, New England area. And here in the middle is R&R Images out of Phoenix. Let's take a look more closely at these websites, see what they're doing right. This is R&R Imaging's website. But this is their home page. And if you look, I've circled on their home page alone all the keywords that they have applied and where they've applied it. They are trying to position – they're, they're in the world of digital print and they do a lot of things, but they are trying to position themselves, if you analyze their keywords, as a digital or a direct marketing company, direct marketing solutions provider, a direct response agency. They're, that's how they want people to find them. And if you look on their page, you'll find eight – various combinations of direct or direct marketing on their home page alone. So that's what search engines are finding when they go looking. 
So what other social media activities are, uh, is R&R &R Images doing? Well, in addition to their website, they're very uh, active and visible on LinkedIn, which we're going to look at later, at, on Facebook, which we're also going to look at. They're, they have a Twitter account, which they're constantly updating. They produce a number of videos, which they upload to YouTube video, and we're going to see how that works in a second. They do a lot of online public relations. Any of their uh, uh, corporate announcements are posted online. They even have their own blog. So they're very, very active. So then the question is, okay, they're doing all this stuff. Is it really moving the needle? What are the results? What's the ROI? Well, if you talk to Rod Key, who is founder CEO at r and Image, he will tell you uh, that LinkedIn, for example, opened up a communications prospect, a, a very profitable prospect in the greeting card business. His sales guys are constantly on LinkedIn uh, engaged in conversations, and we're going to show that in a sec. He has developed diehard followers on both Facebook and Twitter. And what good are diehard followers? Well, for one, Rod uses them to test new products and get feedback to ideas and marketing concepts and product ideas. And he's developed quite a few partnering opportunities with other agencies and other providers to go approach uh, other um, potential customers. For his brand, he said it's really helped him become top of mind when they have a project to bid on. It becomes a real differentiator for our customers, according to Rod. When he goes in to sit down with them, it's something new to talk about. And as a result, people are talking about us, he says. People are talking about R&R &R in terms different from a lot, of, uh, a lot of other providers. So what about you? What are the right keywords for your business, for your website? And you have a number of different ways to go here. You can imbue your website. Uh, you can go many different directions. You can imbue your website with the capabilities that you have internally, such as digital printing or print-on-demand or point-of-sale printing or large, whatever it is. You can talk about your capabilities and use those for keywords, or you can talk about your solutions. Your customers may be looking for transactional marketing uh, services or graphic art services or direct mail and marketing services or book printing, photo books, billboard signage, what have you. You may want to Think about that. If, uh, how, what words do you think people are going to use to find solutions to their problems? Also, if you're in the world, at whatever vertical or whatever uh, industry you're in, make sure that appears somewhere on your, on, on your keyword list. So whatever keywords you use, any of these, should be built into your website, into the HTML coding, in the text, as uh, image tags, as captions for photos, what have you. Make sure to use them. There are a number of uh, resources. If you're looking uh, to pursue uh, a keyword strategy, there are a number of great resources such as Google AdWords has a, a free uh, Google keyword tool to help you decide what are good keywords for your site. Word Tracker, another free service that will give you some suggestions. Just in general about social media, uh, Marketing Sherpa and HubSpot, two great resources with a lot of valuable material on not only keywords but social media strategy and news and trends in the social media world. Let's move on. Let's move on to social networking. And we talked about earlier uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. LinkedIn is really a business social network. Facebook is really more of a social, uh, personal uh, uh, social network site, but it's also used by, by uh, more and more businesses as we'll see. Let's start with LinkedIn. A few facts about LinkedIn. It's a great social uh, networking tool, as I said, for businesses and business people to network. There are 90 million users as we speak, and growing every day, 6% growth every month, one new member every single second of the day signs on to LinkedIn. And what are the benefits to you? Well, again, it lets you connect with far more customers and prospects than you have before. You can join groups that are interesting to you, groups of interest that might be a potential business opportunity for you. Once you join those groups, and we're going to go through this exercise, you can per start participating in discussions with people, in discussions that you think uh, you can add some value. And at the same time, you're starting to build relationships through these conversations and building your brand as, as a, a provider of valuable information and service. It's very easy to join LinkedIn. Just go to LinkedIn.com. Fill in a little bit of information about yourself. Hit, hit the uh, button, and you'll be able to enter information a little bit more about yourself, a little more summary of what your company does. Um, you can have a blog if you have it. You can upload a, a logo of yourself. 
you can just describe yourself in a little more detail. Or if you want to use an individual, you can set up an individual LinkedIn account of an individual who represents your company. Um, so you have a different couple of different ways. Or you can do both. You don't, it's not an either or. You can do both. So once you've joined and you've set up your profile, you can start uh, uploading and inviting contacts, people that you're going to relate to or, or communicate with via the LinkedIn uh, platform. Very simple, upload your contact database. You might have uh, an Excel file or what have you or an email file. It's very easy to upload. Once you've uploaded, you can start um, inviting them to uh, connect with you. And once you've connected with them, you'll start developing a roster of connections that will keep growing most likely the more you the more you do it, and, you'll, and, the, and the, uh, the Connections page also recommends other people that you might want to be uh, connected to. So this is where you start developing your constituency, your LinkedIn constituency that you can be communicating with. Okay, you can develop contacts, but you can also, as I mentioned earlier, join groups of interest uh, using LinkedIn, which is a fascinating environment here. For example, we're in the marketing world, so I'm curious about what's going on in direct marketing. I entered, the, the, I entered direct marketing in the LinkedIn interface, and up came 452 results. That means 452 different groups on LinkedIn were involved in direct marketing. It's quite a large number, quite a wealth of opportunity here. Here's an example of one I did join. I joined the direct mail group, and I hit join this group. And within, uh, within literally an hour, I was able to join a discussion. I found a discussion that I thought I could add value to. This gentleman here, uh, asked a question. He was looking for direct mail advice. And he got quite a few responses right out of the gate. Within an hour, he had 22 different people from around the world offering suggestions for his particular direct mail uh, uh, issue. I joined in. I answered him. I gave him some advice that I thought was valuable. And he and I have become connected. He and I have become, we have a relationship going. And this is where it began, just by responding to a, to a question or a discussion involving myself in a discussion on LinkedIn. So let's talk about the groups that you could join, depending on uh, the industry that you specialize in. Are you in the world of book publishing, for example? Well, if you enter the world of book publishing and you search for it, you'll find there are 125 different groups involved in the world of book printing, book, book publishing. Here's one that you could join. Uh, uh, I recently joined uh, this particular group, Publishers and Booksellers. It's very easy to join a group. You enter some information about yourself. You tell them uh, how often you want to receive updates from this particular group because the administrator of the group is frequently sending out information, updates, uh, new discussions. You can ask how often do you want to get notified about new discussion opportunities and uh, opt to uh, send group announcements or allow members of the group to send you messages, and then you hit join, and you're in. By and large, many of these groups are wide open to, uh, to membership. So let's talk about you. What industry groups would you want to join if you're in the world of digital printing? Well, book publishing, as I mentioned, is one of them. There are 125 groups, 16,000 total people. <coughs> Excuse me, a member of that, those groups alone. You might be in the world of transactional or trans promo marketing. Well, there's almost 1,000 people online on LinkedIn to talk to. Or moving on, B2B, business to business marketing, nearly 200 groups. Business to consumer marketing, 28 groups. Or you might want to go vertical. If you're interested in a particular vertical market, there's a, there's a group or many groups for almost virtually any single ver ver vertical market that you'd be interested in. Here's just a, a handful. Financial services is 82 groups, or healthcare marketing, 147, and so on. Hispanic, 131, or automotive. You name it, if you enter it in this uh, groups dialog box, you will find uh, groups that, uh, that uh, are of interest to you. LinkedIn has a lot of resources to help you, by the way. If you go to the LinkedIn site, they will help you uh, optimize your profile so you can get the most out of your uh, profile listing. Or it'll help you. It'll take guide you pretty, uh, take you by the hand to develop contacts and to help you participate in groups. Um, there's a lot of assistance to be had at LinkedIn, and it's very easy. It's a very, uh, very simple, easy, and, and productive environment. All right, let's move to Facebook again. Facebook has been in the news quite a bit lately. Has been uh, the definition of Facebook is. A social networking uh, website that's open to users over the age of 13. It 
generates a lot of money from advertising. In fact, its current estimated market value is $50 billion. And an amazing fact that just came out this week is that LinkedIn accounts for 25% of the entire U.S. website page viewing activity. It's pretty amazing. What are the applications for Facebook? Well, as I said earlier, it is more of a social environment, but again, more businesses are getting involved. You can build an online network of friends. You can send messages via email or chat mail, and you can also market your business. R&R, images, as we mentioned earlier, they're very active on Facebook. What do they do? Well, they post information that might be of value to, to their viewers or their followers or their contacts. And it's not just about what they do, but they share information that uh, in, in general might be of assistance, such as on social media or uh, new technology updates or industry news on marketing tips on their blog. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to add value <clears throat> on your Facebook and or your LinkedIn page. It's not just about you. It's about what other value, what kind of information, what kind of developing yourself as a thought leader and not just in a multitude of areas. Once you've joined uh, these social networks such as LinkedIn or Facebook, make sure you, you promote them on your own website. Uh, here at r and you can see that Rod has listed Facebook and LinkedIn and his newsletter and his blog. These are things that you can click on. This is right on his home page. So you can quickly <coughs> Go to that site, see if it's of any interest, and join and connect. It's a great outreach tool. How about Twitter? Do you tweet? Um, a lot of people think it's, mm, I'm not sure if I really need Twitter or what its real value is, but in fact, uh, as a social networking and microblogging site, it's a great place to offer ideas, to offer, uh, to refer other, or tweet other content, or develop followers, or build your brand, drive, web, uh, drive uh, website traffic. Follow others' tweets. There's a lot of great information. If you're looking for something, Twitter is not a bad place to find out. If you have any questions about anything, Twitter actually can uh, uh, conjure up quite a bit of great, valuable information for you. You know how this works? Twitter gives you a range of 140 characters to send to your tweet. You can send it out via your website or send it out uh, via your uh, mobile device. Um, Again, it's a valuable tool for getting uh, information out and for driving people to your website, as Rod does here. Let's talk about online video. Quick facts. This is some screen grabs from Osei's online uh, YouTube account and from Rod's uh, YouTube account at r and &R. Some quick facts. Almost two-thirds of marketers today are using online video, and that number is rising pretty quickly, especially this year. More online videos are viewed than there are searches on Google, which is an astounding fact. And according to Permission TV and Marking Sherpa, many studies have said that the human face and the body language that is expressed through video is, is far, it, it's far more valuable. It says far more than just text, and it helps build a lot of trust for you. Um, just seeing a human face behind the company is, is, is of incredible importance to, to your brand and your company. Um, the applications, well, what can you, you can do a number of things. In this case, uh, OSE is demonstrating a, a new press, the, uh, or, or a press, the Vario Print 6000. You can deliver case studies, demonstrate key applications or products, and you can use it to educate and train customers. Just kind of gives a human face, a human face to your, to your company and your business. It's extremely simple to set up an account on YouTube. Go to the YouTube homepage, youtube.com. Simply click on this Create Account button. It gives you some interfaces to fill out. You can set up a profile for yourself, enter a little, you know, a few bits of information. You can set up, again, uh, personalize your profile, add your logo. Once that's all done, you can start uploading videos. Up here is the little Upload button. Hit Upload, and this is our YouTube account page at Cold Creative. Uh, all your videos will be listed here, and they will all have uh, distinct URLs that you can broadcast and send out and drive people to see uh, to your website. Or, well, let's talk about promoting your video. You can drive people to your website to see a video. You can also use your uh, in-house newsletter or your H uh, email newsletter to drive people. Uh, you can link, embed links to your video within your newsletter. Should also mention them on your if you join, if and when you join LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, make sure to promote them. Promote your videos on uh, on those social networking sites. And hey, you're in the world of print. Also drive people on the printed materials you do. Uh, many of you, and there's a lot of talk now these days about QR codes and um, 
These are a couple of, uh, of examples of QR codes. These are codes that when scanned by a, uh, a smartphone, if you've, if you've printed that uh, code on a piece of uh, collateral, it'll take uh, with your mobile phone, it'll take your mobile phone app right to that page where either your website or your video uh, can be viewed. Um, so again, it's, a, it's not very difficult to do any of this, frankly. It's, uh, uh, but take it as a whole. And these, these, all these tools that we've discussed so far do not by any means replace what you've done in the past, if you've done anything in terms of marketing. But they're great complementary tools for just reaching out to far greater numbers of people than we've been able to in the past as marketers. So at this point, um, I believe I'm handing it over to uh, Paul. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we wanted to share with you some of the things that we're doing within OSE uh, with regards to social media. And uh, we're, we're really investing some time and energy and effort into doing uh, a lot more of this starting with uh, uh, our 2011 plan. And uh, really our, our plan is to be visible and be everywhere. We use social media to reach out to the media, uh, to our customers and to prospects. Uh, more frequent OSE data-driven news and commentary out on the web. Uh, more regular communication to analysts, influencers, and industry executives, and be present to the media and industry. So it's all about FaceTime. It's being in front of our customers and the people who might be customers. So first uh, up is our Facebook plan. So we're going to do a variety of things, starting with uh, we're going to have a customer of the month uh, where we're going to have uh, a case study on a customer and what they're doing with our equipment or our solutions to, uh, to be productive and, and a healthy growing business. And second is launch Facebook ads, both generic and product specific, um, and even industry specific ads that we'll, uh, we'll put throughout uh, the Facebook community. Ask the experts will host a Q&A with an industry specialist and or uh, some customers every month to generate activity and discussions on our site. Uh, Insider Info will put helpful tips and tricks, and we're going to actually uh, start putting Facebook contests on there to, to start getting people involved. Within Twitter, uh, we're going to have some tweet events and some campaigns. We also have a variety of, of experts both within OSE and within the consultant community that participates with OSE, uh, and we'll start doing some, uh, some tweeting on that. And also YouTube, we're going to have a variety of videos, including excerpts from the Presco webinars, uh, like the one that you're watching now. And we'll have those up on YouTube, uh, both in private channels and public channels. And then uh, finally, from a blog standpoint, uh, our primary blog is the Digital Nirvana on whatthethink.com. Uh, and it's a source for the digital industry news and analysis. And uh, we will continue to update that as well. Um, so we uh, wanted to also promote the remaining uh, web star, webinar series. Uh, the next uh, five coming up, uh, you'll notice that there's always on the first Tuesday of every month, and we will uh, certainly have these promoted actively out there. The next one coming up is color coordinated. It's bringing expanded color capabilities into your traditional monochrome business. Uh, and then after that, we'll be talking about selling marketing solutions versus print solutions, and we'll, uh, we'll keep this going. We'll also be looking to add August and September topics probably in the next few weeks. So uh, stay tuned on that. And uh, we would like to, uh, to open it up for questions. I'll take it out of broadcast mode. I know we had some uh, technical difficulties getting people logged in, so I don't know how many people uh, are up for questions, but we'll open it up for a minute or two. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Paul. Yeah, I just had a question about uh, you know, on the social media side of things. What, what, what should we watch out for? Maybe you covered that right at the beginning, but uh, if I missed it, I know that you know I, I tell my uh, my daughters, you know, watch watch what you post on on your on your website and your you know your uh, Facebook account and all those kind of things. Is that is that something that um, you know has I'm sure it creates problems can create some problems. And I had, for example, somebody tell me one time that they had a, uh, I guess it was just a picture. Somebody took a picture of a, of a guy standing next to a brand new press that he had bought. And he was whispering in the ear of a woman that was standing near the press. And somebody took the picture and posted that and said, wonder what's going on there. And the only oh. reason why he was doing that is because the noise of the press, she couldn't hear what he was saying. So he was up close to her, you know, with his hand by his mouth talking into her ear. And somebody interpreted it the wrong way. So, the, the the point being that there's also some caution you have to take when you're when you're putting together these kind of things. So I don't know if you run into that, Bob. Do you? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hey. Uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, you know what? Uh, there are um, 
a vast number of faux pas that have happened on social media. Yeah. I mean, some major, major uh, uh, issues, uh, which I actually have in another presentation. But, uh, yeah, you really got to be careful. I mean, some people have faked their identities to try to promote their products and have been got, gotten caught. Some companies mm -hmm. have had uh, disgruntled employees post unflattering videos or commentary about their companies, which caused horrendous problems. Um, you know, a whole raft of ideas. Uh, even Facebook itself had a big problem with its privacy settings not too long ago. They had, so, I mean, there's just so, there are quite a few, you know, you know pitfalls uh, out there when you do social. And it's not something you can just slap up. You've got to be really careful. Um, you know, once you're out there, you're, again, you're opening yourself up to a far wider audience. It's a little bit more Wild West out there. You can't really control right, right. the conversation so much as you normally could. So yeah, very definitely. Uh, there are some, you know, some pratfalls, pitfalls to, to be aware of. Oh, yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to ask you about too. It seems to me like, you know, even though we have an, an internet within OSE, I'll get, I'll get, um, I'll constantly be getting emails. I have a BlackBerry. I'll be constantly getting emails, you know, about, uh, you know, companies that want to try to sell me clothing or this or that. And I go in and I say, they say unsubscribe. So you unsubscribe to it, and sometimes it, it actually does stop, and other times it doesn't. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, the other thing I can say is that I think you also may want to be selective in how often you post some information, because if I get something from somebody every single day, I just delete it. I don't even look at it anymore. Mm -hmm. I just say, Bing, you know, delete. So, oh, yeah. I mean, how, how do you be selective so that when you do have a message that's important, you're not giving it a you know, every day to every you know to people, and then after a while they just say, "Oh, it's another message from Dan." You know, I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are uh, you know rules of etiquette <laughs> yeah. for communicating uh, you know online, uh, and one of them is whoever you talk to, you really should have permission to talk to them. Um, they should have given you um, uh, you know the, the authorization to market to them. And, they sh and once they do, they should give you permission. They, they should allow you. You should allow them the ability to unsubscribe. But in general, you shouldn't reach out to people that don't, haven't asked you to do that. Um, you can be labeled a spammer, <laughs> and right. that can be worth really yeah. bad for your brand. You know, uh, if you over communicate, there is a fine line between you know too much and too little uh, online communication. Very definitely, uh, and it can really irritate people. Uh, I know I'm in the same way. I mean, there are a number of email. Um, Providers such as Constant Contact that won't let you send out, um, you know, messages to large number of, uh, numbers of people unless they're sure that uh, unless Constant Contact is sure that they've approved being marketed. To I see. Um, well, that's good because that protects their reputation as well. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, they've learned from experience. You know, um, that they, they can they can all be you know labeled as spammers. So people don't right. like that. Uh, that's a label you don't need. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Well, that uh, concludes this call, uh, the social scene for digital printers. Uh, please join us uh, the first Tuesday of March. We're happy to have you guys here for uh, adding color capabilities into your traditional monochrome business. So anyway, thanks again from OSE and the Presco program. And uh, on behalf of Cole Creative, who uh, graciously uh, provided the content today, and we look forward to having you again. Thanks, everyone.